Hello, everybody. Welcome to TSAM Digital Regulations and Compliance. I'm Anam Khan. I'm the head of content here at Fox on Media. And joined my, by me is Jordan Domish. He's the general manager at Relativity Trace. Hello, Jordan. How are you? Hey, great. Great to see you. It's, it's super excited to, to have the conversation. Brilliant. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, first of all, jo uh, Jordan, just to kick things off, it will be brilliant if you could introduce yourself. Yeah, for sure. So hi, everyone. I'm Jordan Domash. I lead uh, the Relativity Trace Communication Surveillance product. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with, with Relativity or Relativity Trace, Relativity has been around for over a decade. We actually started out in investigations and e-discovery. Um, that was the, where the product was originally built and launched for, and we're the market leader in that space. So when you think of investigations and e-discovery, it's really the reactive side of surveillance, right? We're going back in time, we're collecting all this information, we're centralizing it in the database, and we're building really sophisticated machine learning technologies to sift through it. Because in some of the biggest investigations in the world, you could have 100 million documents and you need technology to sift through it. And uh, many of our customers came to us and they said, hey, we need help with this other problem that's very similar communication surveillance. It's also sifting through uh, the same type of high volumes of unstructured data with the same types of variety and data sources and attachments. And uh, I lead the, uh, the communication surveil surveillance business for the company. All right, brilliant. And how, what are the most interesting things um, that you see in this space? Yeah, communication surveillance is, is really interesting. And, you know, first of all, just from my perspective, you know, I lead a team that builds software and we're, we're passionate about developing software that solves a real pain point for our customers. And when you, when you look at communication surveillance, the entire function is built on a partnership between the business, right, the compliance, the surveillance teams and technology. When you think of communication surveillance, we're seeing an explosion in data volumes. We're seeing new com communication channel, uh, channels popping up every day. We're seeing a, a, an evolving pattern of behaviors and misconduct. And you need sophisticated technology with machine learning, with artificial intelligence to keep up. And the compliance team, they're not gonna be able to work without this type of sophisticated technology. And so, you know, our customers, the industry as a whole, they're super excited to go really in depth with the technology to partner with, with groups like us. And even when you talk about the heads of surveillance, the, the most senior executives, like they go really deep into how the software is configured and what it looks like, how it works, because it really matters to their business. And it's just an, an, innovate, a, a, an industry where, where innovation can really help and where we feel like we can make a difference. And you know, that's what we're passionate about. Mm -hmm, brilliant. And, um large banks have have been involved for years in communication surveillance but now we're seeing that um, buy side firms pharmaceutical and even retail are making it a core part of their um, their compliance strategy what do you think is driving this change yeah yeah i mean so so for regulated financial firms including buy side firms communication surveillance is is, is a requirement you know finra in the us has been requiring supervision for years and while the large banks may have been the first groups to go all in with sophisticated communication surveillance technology, today we, we view it as, as a baseline. And I think the shift was driven by a couple things. You know, the first is advancements in technology. So, and then the second is, is an increase in, in regulatory pressure where you need to up your, your, your surveillance game. On the technology point, you know, technology has advanced where uh, it, uh, so now a sophisticated machine learning driven communication surveillance is available to the masses. It's not, uh, doesn't take an army to run anymore. It can be deployed in the cloud. It doesn't have to cost a million dollars. And so what used to only be accessible to the large banks now is available to firms of all sizes. You know, on the regulatory point, the FCA has repeated in, in several market watches that communication surveillance is important. You know, they've talked about, reiterated the need to capture and monitor voice recordings, 
They've reminded folks during the COVID crisis that you need to monitor for things like, you need to continue your monitoring and you need to focus on risks that are relevant of today, like inside sharing of inside information. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the buy side firms, they often have a variety of inside information, right? They know about non-public information on equity placings, merger and acquisitions, offerings, um, and you're often collaborating with other firms where you might be sharing of in, in, inside information or collusion as a real threat. And so you need to deploy communication surveillance technology uh, to prove that you have a compliant process in everything that you're, you're doing. Brilliant. And what are the top three trends that you are seeing in this area? Yeah, top three trends. So, so there's a lot. I would say the, the first, is, and I talked about this a bit already, but advancements in, in machine learning and artificial intelligence, where it's now available to the masses. Uh, communication surveillance is a difficult business. If you're only using basic lexicons or you're using a system that doesn't have sophisticated capabilities, it's going to generate a lot of false positives. And you're going to need a team of reviewers just to review all the alerts that the system has, has generated. You know, that's communication surveillance of the past. Today, you need technology to reduce noise, filter out the obvious junk, bring forward relevant risks so you don't have to search for them, and focus on the real, so, so your team can focus on what the real issues are. So trend one, advancements in, in machine learning technology that are applicable specifically here. I'd say trend two is the expansion of communication surveillance beyond English or whatever native language the firms are operating in. Mm -hmm. So I think when communication surveillance first became a, a trend, we were searching with English lexicons and that was how you were, you were operating. Today, that's not gonna be the case. You need technology that can handle the global multilingual world that we're operating in. Things like language identification, translation, searching in any language, um, machine learning technology that can work across languages. And so especially for the global groups, um, that have operations where folks are speaking many languages, which is many, um, we're seeing a, a shift in, in evolving our, our surveillance teams to handle that. Mm -hmm. I think the last is uh, the environment to today. We're in a, a shift to working from home and that's changed communication surveillance. It's uh, changed the communication sources that matter. It's you know, it's no longer just email. A lot of the risky communication is happening over Slack, over Teams. Um, Zoom is exploding. You need the ability to capture video collaboration tools, phone calls, um, phone calls from home, WhatsApp. And so there's an explosion of data sources that firms need to stay on top of. And there's risks that are bigger now than they were in the past. You know, sharing of inside information is, is one. And the last kind of work from home piece that, that we've been following is we often talk about the traders having to adapt from working from home, but many surveillance teams are also working from home. You're no longer operating in a world where you can just reach over your shoulder, ask your peer, hey, look at this alert that was generated. Can you help? And so you really need technology to collaborate within the surveillance team to manage your cases, to manage your workflow. And you know, we, we've been building technology that enables collaborations of, of, between the surveillance team themselves. Brilliant. And just a follow up question on that. You did mention uh, how, how you're utilizing ML. Are you utilizing AI at all within the surveillance process? Yeah, yeah. So we, we built out um, artificial intelligence. Uh, we don't look at artificial intelligence as like you press a button and boom, perfect surveillance. It's actually a variety of different technologies used at different phases in the overall surveillance workflow. So we have a set of tools. Um, to remove obvious junk. So before even talking about risks, you need artificial intelligence to remove junk. We've got a variety of, of artificial intelligence capabilities there. One that's really impactful is something we call email threading. So if I send you an email, you forward it, there's a reply all. Many systems just treat those as separate emails. We have technology to logically group them, tell the story. So this led to this, led to this, and only alert on one. So you don't have to get multiple alerts for, for the same underlying issue in the same conversation. We've got technology that actually risk scores communications for individual behaviors, you know, collusion, uh, avoiding compliance, whatever, uh, whatever the, the market manipulation risk may be. 
And so artificial intelligence specifically giving a score zero to 100 of how risky that communication is on every behavior. And then we also have investigatory artificial intelligence tools. So an alert gets generated, how do you understand the context behind that alert? Is there another email or phone call or chat that will help you understand that story? And so we bridge the dots with artificial intelligence by linking potentially related communications together. Brilliant, brilliant. And where do you think this space is heading in the future, considering that everything is just becoming more digital, we're moving into a virtual environment? How do you think communication surveillance is going to mold itself going forward? Yeah, I think, uh, I think if you look at five-year horizon, the technology is there where you can be using artificial intelligence and machine learning. And we see a shift away from lexicons and, and kind of basic uh, first-gen communication surveillance into leveraging more, tech, more sophisticated technology that's already available today. We see a massive growth in the cloud. Um, I know, you know many, many financial institutions have been you know, lagging other industries and their adoption of, of, of cloud processes, especially regulatory cloud processes. And we're seeing institutions getting more comfortable than they were in the past. And so those are the, the, the two trends that I would, I would highlight. Brilliant. And what are the top three risks you would say um, for the, the surveillance teams to look an eye out for, especially now everybody's working from home and things can be different and trickier to monitor? Yeah, three risks. So I think the first would be the new data sources. Um, you know, we're, we're seeing data sources evolving every day. If you're not capturing them, there's a risk that they may be using them anyways and using them in authorized channels. And so you don't, you don't want the compliance team to lag the business and their adoption of, of specific channels. So, you know, Zoom, other video collaboration tools, Slack, Teams, whatever, whatever it may be. That, that, that's kind of risk one. I'd say risk two is having static rules in your um, surveillance processes. So for many organizations, if you just build out basic lexicons, never look at them again, you're not going to be evolving your, your policies to the risks of today. You know, artificial intelligence can, can help a lot, um, but if you, if you don't have that type of technology, then make sure you're at least critically thinking about how the world is changing and how that could impact your specific risks. Um, you know, and I would say that the biggest risk, or the, the, the last risk is you know, not, not keeping up with technology that's available today. I think for those that are attending you know, conferences like TSAM, you're starting to get a pulse of what's happening in the industry, what's going on, what's evolving. Communication surveillance of today, significantly more advanced than five years ago. And if you haven't looked at what's out there, you're probably missing out. Brilliant. And if our viewers want to get in touch with you or find out more about Relativity Trace, how can they, how can they do so? Yeah, so go to our, our website, www.relativity.com. You can follow us on social media. We've got an Instagram, we've got a LinkedIn. Uh, if you want to stay in touch with, with what's uh, going on in the relativity ecosystem, I'll also be moderating a panel, Communication Surveillance in the Digital Age, um, at the TSAM Regulations and Compliance Conference. So come check us out, reach out to me. We would love to connect. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Jordan, for this lovely yeah, conversation. Thank you. Join yeah, the conversation. Hope to uh, see you again at TSAM Digital, the event on the 28th and 29th. Yeah, I'll be there. All right.